Welcome to the InfoSec Career Video Series. This set of short videos will provide a brief look into cybersecurity careers and the experience needed to enter them. Today, I'll be speaking with InfoSec Skills author Leighton Johnson about the role of security architect. And fun fact, Leighton was also the very first guest on our CyberWork pro uh, podcast. So go check that out. So without further ado, though, let's get into it. Welcome, Leighton. Thanks, Chris. Good morning. Uh, so, Leighton, let's start with the basics. What is a security architect and what exactly does a security architect do? What are the day to day tasks? The security architect creates plans and provides guidance on implementation of security solutions for the organization. They are knowledgeable and obviously security and systems and networks and computing but they're also gonna be knowledgeable in risk management hmm. and strategies and in the overarching IT infrastructure architecture that the organization has. So this is obviously not gonna be an entry level position. How does one <laughs> become a security architect? I know it's a fairly advanced job title. So can you walk me through some of the experiences that you would need to become qualified for this job role? Sure. Uh, first, you need to know the security components directly. So things like uh, having educational components, whether it be a degree in cybersecurity or in information security is a good start. Another way that, which was the path that I took, was to gain years of experience on top of professional certifications and utilize those in security, those certifications in security and in IT and those types of things to gain an understanding of what's necessary for the organization. The third thing you always have to have is an understanding from an organization view of how they deal with risk. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand risk management and how it's implemented within the organization. Uh, now, you, you mentioned uh, formal degrees in either mm -hmm. cybersecurity or information security, um, and, mm -hmm. and you also mentioned certifications. What type of certs would help you uh, in so supporting your, your knowledge base? Well, I would typically approach it, and what I often recommend to people is to approach it from starting with the basic security certifications like Security Plus from CompTIA, which I know InfoSec delivers, um, CASP, and then move into the CISSP from ISC Squared, they have a concentration in architecture specifically. Oh, yes. Uh, that follows it. It's called ISSAP, right. Information System Security Architecture Professional. Right. That right. helps with the big picture of what you have to focus on. Great. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, that, that's a great set of uh, educational um, milestones, uh, set points. So uh, breaking it down to a more granular level, what skills, either tech skills or soft skills, does a security architect need to do their uh, job well? They have to have skills in understanding how security components work, uh, firewalls, intrusion detection systems, network access, segmentation, how operating systems employ security, Windows, Linux, Unix, Macintosh, and then how the components work together. So. Uh, where do they work? How do you route information? How do you keep it secure? How do you, what's, you know, in today's world, in the last 18 months, for example, how do VPNs work? How do you do remote access and keep it secure? Those types of things would be where they work with, um, on a day-to-day -day activity. Now, um, I, I'm imagining that most people who want to get to security architect probably have one or more of these tools in their toolbox. Is there a mm -hmm. way of sort of looking at sort of holistically at like what a completed, you know, something that a security architect has created? Like, you know, I mean, like chess masters learn by, vis you know, viewing yeah, old, yeah. old, old chess, right. you know, chess moves. Right. Is, there, exactly. is there a way to look at like, well, well yeah, designed? I mean, you start from an architectural standpoint. I okay. mean, Security itself um, it has been uh, placed into the enterprise architecture tools kit um, that most organizations at one way or another have, whether it be internationally or nationally, you know, there are tools and techniques out there around the U.S. federal space, which has their federal enterprise architecture, 
which has a security architecture component. Um, these days, they've added that in the last 10 years uh, since they originally created it. Um, DOD also has one in their uh, architecture framework they call DODAF that has a security component to it. Um, TOGAF, uh, SABSA, these are specifically focused on the security side of the IT utilizations that uh, it's, so these are all the starting tools. And then you get into, you know, classic mechanisms around understanding network data flows and those types of things. So data flow maps and data flow diagrams and system um, design components coming out of the general development arena, uh, you know, whether it be um, internationally from ISO or ITIL mm -hmm. or common tools like are available today from places like uh, COSO and COBET, you know, from ISACA and that type of thing, all are tools that we would use um, to help design out the uh, resistant, resilient architectures needed to ensure that the requirements for all the components are in place and then check them. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that a security assessor, a security architect does every day is check what's working. Yeah. All right? They do vulnerability assessments. They'll do risk reviews. They'll do updates based on security engineering mechanisms. So they'll have a, a, a foot in that field. They'll have a, a, a foot in the field of implementation. They don't put it in, but they guide how it gets put in. Got it. Now, um, speaking uh, very, um, you know, on a, on a micro level in terms of tools, mm -hmm. are there are there common tools that security architects use? Are there are there any sort of open source ones that people can play around with, or is this a, a lot of very sort of um, uh, well, both, specific proprietary? Both SAPS and TOGAF are open source, so you can get both of those. Um, the the architectural components in DODAF and the architectural components in FEA are also open. You can go to those locations, one in the DOD architectural world, one in the federal architectural world, which is run openly by the CIO Council of the U.S. government, which is all the CIOs of all the agencies, and they manage the federal enterprise architecture uh, program. Now, where do security architects work? I, I, you know, a, a lot of job roles will have, you know, they're better as a freelancer or mm -hmm. they only work in in house. Like, how does is this something where you're you're basically going to work with a company for a long haul? Or is it do you kind of ride in like the man with no name and then move on once you've sort of designed the uh, thing as a going? consultant? I got you. <laughs> yeah. OK. Most of the security architects that I've worked with and that I did were regular employees of companies. They work not necessarily at a system level. They typically would work above that where they would approach it from say a business unit level. And so they would get a sense of how the business does their activities. And so they would be a regular employee. They would be looking at different parts of the organization. And so they would have you know, and gain over a period of time institutional knowledge of how they do things. And that makes them even more valuable to the organization because then they all be the ones who know where one thing is handled. If it's not handled in a particular system, it's handled somewhere else. They're the architects of our layered defenses for security is what a security architect does. Oh, they're great. the ones who map it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. Um, so, yeah, now speaking to like a private versus federal space, are there mm -hmm. extra layers? I know you also teach CMMC with InfoSec. Uh, are there additional layers to the way security architect works uh, in, in a federal or military space? Uh, military, yes. Uh, federal, generally, no. Virtually all the federal agencies have an enterprise architecture division. And that's where the security architects will be. Um, generally, they're not going to be assigned to a particular 
sub agency or sub department of a federal agency. They're going to be, um, as I said, working with multiple uh, organizations. Now, commercially, um, what I've seen when I worked with uh, Lockheed, when I worked with other organizations um, as a regular employee, um, we would be up from the actual delivery organization um, that's doing the product or the service or uh, producing whatever it is for the company um, up a layer or two, but still be exposed to what they're doing on a relatively frequent, often weekly basis around what they have. Um, basically because the security architect in the commercial world also has an extra role which I've seen where they are the ones who create the standards for how the security is going to be implemented across the lines of business, across the units, based upon what the business needs are. Got it. Now, um, for people who are, are moving towards security architect and then mm -hmm. want to use it as a pivot point, what other roles wow. can you move into from security architect? Is this especially suited to move you towards like CISO or manager or something even higher? Well, it'll move you up the technical scale dramatically. Yes. Uh, because you're the one as a security architect who understands the layout of the security for the whole organization. And so you'll be end up working potentially as a CISO, um, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, but I've certainly seen security architects as the technical lead for the CISO. Um, because of course CISOs have to worry about budgets and the other things, you know, so they would be the point person for that. Um, I've certainly seen them uh, provide support on special projects, um, you know, and those types of things as well. Now uh, for people who are watching this video, whether they're a security analyst or a pen tester or something right. who are ready to get started, what's something they can do right now after they turn this video off that'll move them towards the goal of becoming a professional security architect? Understand one where you're going to be looking at vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the security anyway, but you're going to have to be doing it from two perspectives. You're going to have to be doing it from the security perspective, and you're also going to have to be exposed to where those exist in the business and what the business is doing. And so you always got to have two eyes when you're looking at it, you know, two viewpoints, uh, one from the business perspective, as well as one from the IT security perspective, both sides. Got it. And so which side that you feel less comfortable with, go learn about, all right? Within the business, especially. And that will increase both what you can do as a security architect and obviously increase your value to the organization as well. Hence, help your career progression. Perfect. Leighton Johnson, thank you so much for your time and insight today. It's always great to talk to you. All right, it's good to talk to you too, Chris. Uh, and thank you all for watching this episode. If you'd like to know more about other cybersecurity job roles, please check out the rest of InfoSec's career video series. We'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.